Welcome. Thanks for coming to our webinar. My name is Frank Lezitz with Viral Marketing. I'll be your listener's advocate today, asking Dave all the questions that you want to know. And we'll make sure that the chat is turned on if you're here live. So I think I have to enable it. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Dave since you're here live, maybe versus watching the replay, feel free to ask in the chat. And I'll ask Dave. So my company is called Viral Marketing. Been around for quite some time. Get Viral, G-E-T-V-Y-R-A-L. And we execute for Dave a large part of a 60 touch plan. I think we're like 36 touches of the 60. Dave's taken the core of viral marketing plan that we execute for him and added to it to make it even better. And I think this is just a wonderful webinar to show the entire plan. Uh, a little bit about Dave. I'm gonna introduce you, Dave, you ready? Sounds good. 20, 20 years in the business, South Central Pennsylvania, 20 team members on the Dave Hook team inside of a Keller Williams office. In his area, his unique proposition is he's kind of the only team where the leadership team doesn't compete against the agent and the leadership team is fully focused on training, generating leads, and even setting appointments for probably of the 20 agents that get them, about 40% of the appointments are booked for their agents. Last year, sold 350 homes on his team. Uh, that's about 3.1 million GCI, 102 million volume in his area. This year, at the time of this recording, about midsummer, 2023, sold 170 homes already. This has to sound pretty good, Dave, when someone says it to you. Three lead sources, top three lead sources. This is what we're doing. This number one lead source database, past clients, sphere, centers of influence, old leads on this 60 touch program, 175 homes sold last year. That's about 1.5 million GCI from the database, Dave. That's right. Yep. About okay. half. Yep. Second lead source, paid leads, writing checks to Zillow, realtor.com. That's where some people go. About 60 homes from that lead source, right? Not on the flex plan either, you know, writing the advertising checks. Yep. And then third, which is, I just love the investor in me. You probably have an investment division. I know you do. Yeah, and uh, you're getting, you're getting listings from going out, you know, with the cash offer. People take a listing, so from the cash offers, new construction, 45 home sales last year from that source. Those are your top three lead sources. That's right. And it was interesting before this webinar, um, Frank. I just follow what's recommended in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Yeah, that's right? it. That's it for sure. So, yep. If you're kind of maybe new in the business, us elders in the business now, it seems like a little bit on the older side of the business, right? From we grew up starting our teams. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent book was the Bible of real estate written by Gary Keller. And you have a chance to go read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. There's a model in there. There it is. There it is. There's a model in there called the lead generation model that Dave is executing on steroids. They talk about a 33 touch program. Dave's like, ugh. That's for rookies. We're going 60. Okay. So today on the webinar, you're gonna go, we're gonna go through Dave's entire 60 touch program. All right. But I do want to share and put this here in the chat. Dave does have this for sale. Dave, take 90 seconds, no more, and we'll get to the content of what you do have for sale for somebody if they want like full complete access to be able to swipe and deploy this in their own business. Yeah, Frank. So uh, we do we do love doing these trainings for people that can self implement, and we also have a Google Drive where our marketing department, our marketing director John, uh, he and his team design all of our pieces, but all of the the direct mail that you're going to hear about today, all of the digital marketing, even links to my actual videos, um, all of the client events, process docs for that stuff, even stuff that we do called the Brain Ambassador Program to zero cost a database touch program, um, a menu of options for local businesses to sign up to, even an add-on for a nonprofit that people often ask us how we integrate a nonprofit by communicating to our database and sort of um, enrich their lives by uh, including them in giving to the community. And so all of that is in our Google Drive and we update that every month. And, um, you know, I just want to share that with people and 
the hope is, is that if you do a database 60 touch program and you have lifetime access to what we're doing, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and have a massive marketing department of your own. And you can get that and it'll save you a ton of time and a ton of money. So that's available for you. And I put the link there where you can buy it. It's available for the next seven days, which is on that link. Dave's marketing folder dot card dot coo dot c a r r d dot co. And David, if there was time to buy the domain, we'd probably make it Dave Marketing dot com. That's right. <laughs> which I like. Right. Be easier. That's available for you. Go check it out. Dave, let's get to it. All right. Sounds good. Tell me. Tell me the moment of clarity you had in your business when that was in the past 20 years of I yep. need to take my database seriously, figure out a plan and execute at a high level. Tell me yep. about when that realization came to you. To well, Frank, extremely it was, seriously. Yeah, it was in 2006 and I was 26 years old and I had been selling real estate for a few years. And what I learned in my, in my first two or three years, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. We've known each other a long time. And I don't know if I've told you this story. So when I started, I, you know, knew people in the community, like many of us, I had some friends and family that knew, like, and trust me. But uh, what I did was I read a book on prospecting and I went out and I started going door to door. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I did it for two years. And Frank, I was, there I was 23, 24 years old. And I realized if I put rollerblades on, I could hit four times the amount of doors. And so there I was in my suit and, and tie back when I didn't wear a t-shirt to work. And I was on rollerblades, no, true story. And I hit the same three communities, Nottingham, Meeting House Heights, and Chapel Hill in my town on my rollerblades for two years. And finally, uh, after a year and a half or so, the phone really started to ring with listing and buyer referrals from the people in those three neighborhoods, about four, 450 people in those neighborhoods that started to know, like, and trust me. My aha was I took detailed notes. I had a, I had a, remember those trapper keepers in, in high school? Did you ever oh, have one of those? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I had, had a starter jacket. <laughs> okay. I did too. I did too. So, so uh, Chicago Bulls, by the way. So um, I had that trapper keeper and a tax record and I took detailed notes of every conversation that I was on and uh, for two years. And what I learned was on average, it took about six to eight hours of interaction with another human being of little FaceTime, little follow-up, thank you note, little call, doing what I said I was going to do, referring the landscaper that I promised I would refer when I was at the homeowner's front door. And after, on average, about six to eight hours of interaction with that other human, periodically over the course of a year and a half to two years, they started to know, like, and trust me, that's just how long it took. And if you think about like a client relationship from the time you meet a buyer or seller to a closing, you give them a hug, roughly about six to eight hours of ongoing communication and interaction with that other human. And those people refer us if we keep in touch with them. And my, my aha was I took six to eight hours with 450 humans on my rollerblades for two years to get the phone to ring. So that statistically, this book says so, research shows that when they have a life change, those 450 people have a life change happen to them. I'm the first agent that comes to their mind. So I took the six to eight hours times 450 people over two years to earn their mind share so that they know, like, and trust me when they had a life change, I'll be the first agent to come to their mind. 76% of people, according to that book, use the first agent to come to their mind when they have a life change. My aha was all of us, including me, had already put the six to eight hours in with a bunch of other humans, two or three, 400 people in high school, in our, in, in middle school that we invited to our wedding, that our parents know that are in our social circles that are at work or at church. We've already put the six to eight hours in. They already know, like, and trust us. Our failure, my failure was instead of rollerblading and going and developing new relationships with people, I should have been keeping my brand, my face, in front of people that already, I already had put six to eight hours into, and I had failed to capitalize on all of that time, all of the hours. And what I needed to do was just remind those people that I'd already put those hours in, that I can give them value. I can be their economist of choice. I was a real good guy, the guy they knew me to be, so that when they had a life change, I would be the first person that comes to mind. And then I could save all that time 
right? And I didn't have to put the six to eight hours in with 450 people in communities for the next 15 years. And so I built my database and I started to give them value and come from contribution. And then we studied the results for the next 17 years. And what we have today has evolved uh, over the course of, of all that time. Rollerblades, man, in a suit. That's, I got you at the rollerblades. I knew that I would. Do you have a picture? I probably do. Yeah, maybe even like on my social media, if you scroll down far enough. Um, yeah, I'm maybe gonna I go look. I send you. I'll send you. I'll look in the uh, the archives and see what I have. That's going on the next webinar promotion. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love it. Dave, I love that's it. a wonderful story. You know, it's funny. That's exactly how I started viral. I was going to go door knock on the richest homes in Omaha, Nebraska, where I'm from. Yep. And I was real young. I'm like, why yep. are these people going to hire me? Yeah. And they don't want to sell their house right now. That's ridiculous speak. Yeah. I needed to have a way to stay in touch. And everybody was like, slap your picture on a, on a, at the time, like a recipe card. Yep. And I was like, you know what? Let's step the game up and get people to spend time with me online. Yeah. We talked about how it takes some time to spend time. I thought that's great. Yeah. Yep. So now let me ask you this question. Talk to me about the evolution of the recipe of these 60 touches that we're leading up to. So tell me about the 60 touches in a general speak and why yeah. this is the this is the recipe you chose that works. Yeah, great question. So when we first started out, we followed the Red Book 33 touch program. Um, and what we learned as as time went on is in those early days, you know, the, the internet wasn't quite as prevalent. Social media was like just on its way up. And the number of impressions that we were all getting per day were just different and it wasn't quite as saturated. And so when we first started that 33, eventually evolved to a 36 touch program, I actually worked for quite some time. I did 12 direct mail. And then I did a whole combination of other touches that included like hot buys, handwritten notes, some other various things. And what I realized as my database and my business scaled is that uh, the handwritten notes were great when I knew 50 people and the pop buys were great when I had the time to do that one-on-one -on -one time, but it wasn't scalable. And the 36 touches were great when social media and the number of impressions we were getting per day, uh, you know, were just different and lower. Um, and as things evolved and we were tracking it, we realized that we needed to add touches to get the same conversion um, to a sale, to a client, to a new family we could serve as we were getting in the early days. And so we always kept that people ask, why do you still do direct mail? Um, but we have a tracking number. We own 21 phone numbers on, on all of our advertising. So we have a distinct tracking number on our marketing. And what we found is um, direct mail actually really works. In fact, one of our other companies, uh, cash offer company is built off of it and, um, different people absorb media in different ways. And, you know, a certain demographic, uh, they, they still look at their direct mail and they, they're, they don't spend a lot of time on social media or digital marketing and email and other people do. So we, we hit and target our database by air, land, and sea so that, if they're opening up their feed, they're going to see us. If they're opening up their email, they're going to see us. If they open up their mailbox, they're going to see us. And if they turn on their cell phone, they're going to hear us and they're going to get an invite to one of our client events. And so that's sort of the evolution and why we took it from 33 to 36. And now it's 60 plus touches per year with all of those different forms of media. All right. So let's get into it. Yep. So um, what are the silos of the 60 touches let's do the overview and then let's go deep on each of the different types of 60 touches so yeah i think you talked good. about 12 12 direct mail so yep. send out a monthly piece of direct mail talk to us about that and how that system works yeah so great question so we do a monthly direct mail and it's it, the frequency is is once a month so 12 times a year for our direct mail but it's two types of media so one month we do a postcard and on our postcards, we, um, we have a framework on the back of them. There's a little block and I write a handwritten note on the postcard within the boundary of that block. It's about an inch and a half wide by maybe three or four inches tall. And I write a note in blue ink and then that's laser printed on the other couple thousand postcards that go out to my database. There's always a piece of information in there for the database. And then there's always a call to action 
with a handwritten phone number in, in my writing um, for them to, 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 to actually you know, pursue a solution. Um, so that's one touch right there is that postcard. Dave, I love that. Couple questions. Yeah. How big is the postcard? Uh, so it's an executive size postcard. Um, so I, I forget the dimensions of executives. So you got the smaller postcard and then the executive postcard. We go with that executive postcard. Do you mail first class? We do mail first class. How do you handle all the return mail? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, we actually collect them in-house and we have somebody that waits for three different uh, returns to come before we'll go through. And if, you know, what we found is that you get a return and then that was the, 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 the uh, U.S. Postal Service's problem and that will go through the next time. But if, if we get the same person returned three times in a row, then we keep all of those and we go through and we see if we can find their new address or if we need to, you know, expire them from our database. And how many postcards are you mailing a month right now? Oh, well, every other month, the, the direct oh, mail month. goes I'm out. Sorry. Yep, and that side of the database is up to around 2,500 or so is my guess. Got it. Yep. And you've done a very deliberate job of keeping their mailing addresses. Oh yeah, we're we're sort of that. I mean, it's our database. It's the most important part of our part of Dave, our business. You say that so obvious, like, but even that was when just for what it's worth, when Gary turned on command at yeah. one of the family reunion events, he's like only twenty six percent even had the address of the person in command. Yeah, and he told I mean, all the agents in the in the audience like your realtors, you don't even know where people live. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's an epidemic. I mean, we we. We have to stay in front of in front of our people. That I mean, just add it up, Frank. I, I don't know if you have your calculator. If you're watching, you have your calculator. Go on the low end. You know, six six hours to get somebody to, to do what you say you're going to do. Learn about somebody, care about them, follow up with them till they know you. Like, yeah, I kind of like Frank. He's a good guy, and I trust yeah. him. Good. He does what he said he's going to do. Right, six hours, and you know, you 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 imagine that. When they have a life change, the same percentage of the population every year has a life change. And those are in a form of empty nesters. I got a promotion, upsize, downsize, you know, unfortunately got a divorce, something bad happened, something good happened. Same percentage every year of all of our communities, roughly have a life change. And we've put six to eight hours in with, you know, let's just call it 400 people, six hours, right? 400 times six hours that Frank, that's 2,400 hours, 2,400 hours in, in the course of when I was, you know, I'm 43 years old that I put in with four, 400 people. Well, at 40 hours a week for a year, 2,080 hours, wow. yeah. full-time job for a year to, to do that. And we're not going to take a moment, um, just a minute at the end of every month. And get make sure their address and their and their cell number, their email address is in the contact just for a minute, right? And then Preach, to, and I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's I know. it's insane the return on energy, right? When we go to paid leads, nothing wrong with paid leads or prospect. We do all that stuff. It's just not the core of the core of our business is the database. It amplifies the return on everything else in our community. But like we put the re, the energy we put on converting a paid lead, speed to lead, five minutes, call, text, email, beat them over the head with a phone, right? All that stuff that agents do out there to try and connect with a client and then six to eight hours to get them to like and trust you. 400 people, that's 2,400 hours versus we've already done all of that 2,400 hours worth of work. And all we need to do is document their mailing address and their email and then keep in touch with them. And then they'll have a life change. Same percentage every year. And then so you've earned a mind share. Yep. So you're dropping about 2,600 yep. postcards every other month with a right handwritten now. note. Yep. Basically a handwritten note. Month. That's yep. it. Handwritten note. And what, yeah. do you, what do you send in between those months? Thanks for getting me back on track. I was getting right. I got emotional. you. That's, that's why I'm I here. Know. <laughs> I know. So we're doing newsletters. We're doing a newsletter. We started with just a one page and then went to a two page. It's like a trifold. Um, or bifold, I should call it. And it's, it has six pages on it. And the newsletter has, and you can start with just one page, but it has a note from me, two, about 2,000 characters, I believe. Note from Dave, 
on the front. Not a note. Oh, characters, it's almost words. Okay. Characters, characters. And it it, it has uh, usually something personal or something um, of value to them. And then it has our listings on it, has a call to action on every page. What are your call to action? You see these call to actions. Tell me what they are. So we might say for a free home value estimate, call or contact us at. We might say for a cash offer on your home, guaranteed offer on your home, contact us now or free buyer consultation, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, so the note for me that the, the listings, and then we have a a section about our nonprofit, um, where we serve people anonymously in our community who are in financial crisis. And we work with our database, um, to actually serve those people. And our database often gets to deliver the check to, to, to the person that they know who's in financial crisis, um, from us. And we, we usually have names changed a couple little stories about who was helped in the past month. Um, in our community, which is, which is a great part of, of, of the business. We have a note from the leadership team, um, something about leadership and something about them, um, and, uh, and how they might be, you know, adding value in real estate to, to the clients. And then we have our brand ambassador page, which sponsors all of what we do. And and those are 22 businesses locally that partner with us to, um, you know, to, to, to get everything out there. You've got 22 businesses help offset in the cost of this. Yeah, they do. They, they, they um, pay us to help support them. And we don't work with, you know, talk to an attorney about that. Uh, it goes without saying, we don't have anybody in the housing industry that we respa issues. So they're only businesses that are outside of the housing industry that partner with us on all of the stuff we do for our database. What an aha there, Dave. Yeah, yeah. And that's in, that menu evolved. It's, it, we've had those 22 business for about five years. And that's in the Google Drive that you talked about earlier. Um, there's three levels that a business can participate in. And then the great thing for the business is that if they want to participate, we'll get their brand and their logo on all of our 60 Touch database stuff. All the client events, all the mailings, all the emails. Uh, and then we'll have a, bre- a little breakfast with them three times a year at breakfast and uh, talk about business and life. And, and we have a great re- referral relationship with those businesses too. Fantastic. So, so we talked about two, two, two yeah. pieces of direct mail, Newsle- right? Newsletters, a newsletter every six, six times a year, yep. postcard six times a year, the, all your best contacts through database to right. mailing addresses you asked for. And then when it gets kicked back to you, you wait yep. a little bit before you go research and that's going out. All right. Yep. Next pillar. So we got 12 touches a year with direct mail, alternating postcard and newsletter. That's right. Next pillar, let's talk emails. Emails. So we do three emails and I've been with viral. We were talking earlier. We're not really sure how long. I think it's like eight years, maybe 2015. And um, you guys uh, originally taught me how to do video way back when, when I was like scared to do it. And, um, and so you and, and my marketing team helped create some video for us to go out to our database. And that's a piece that we send out. Another piece we send out is a text email. And then a third piece that we send out is a hot listings email. And our hot listings email is our team's listings. And then when they click on it, it takes them to our website to interact with our home search engine. Um, and there is, of course, calls to action free home search, free home value estimate, um, free cash offer, uh, guaranteed cash offer on, on all of those, those pieces as well. I'll give everyone a little hint here. Um, at Viral, pretty close. We send out two videos a month. So you record two helpful Q&A videos a month to go out for two of the three messages. And the third message, just like what you're talking about here, that all text message, Mm-hmm. Is usually some reason to respond, like attend a seller workshop, find out what your home is worth, get a cash offer on your home, back to some type of landing page. As a little gift here, we just sent this out last week for a client, Dave in Austin. Uh, 13 listings taken off of 110 opt ins. Nice. And the list size was 6,000. I think the 6,000. Yeah, that was past client sphere, everyone else. Lots of seller leads because a lot of radio and TV in the list. 
Would you like to see the email? Yeah, it'd be awesome. Let's check it out. I'll find it. I'll, I'll post it here. But it's kind of an example of a, a email that goes out that spikes response immediately. Yeah, of course. Whereas some of the other emails are kind of more to educate. Yeah, for sure. No, I love it. What else so do you share are... about the 36 emails? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the thing for us is just consistency with them coming from contribution, making sure they're not generic or templated. And, you know, we want to we wanna give, give value in our video and our emails. We want to do stuff that's local. And the thing that, you know, I love about all of this content that we're talking about is that once we, once we do it a few times and we are able to, to come from contribution in one media source, we can then take that and put that same topic on our newsletter, put that same topic on our social media and, um, and sort of replicate that. So it's not as cumbersome as it, as it, you know, you think it, once you do it once or twice on one piece of media, you can start to replicate it over and over again on the other ones. Yeah. So I'm sure the content you put on your emails can be posted on social media, retargeted, everything else, which we're doing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 12 pieces of direct mail. So yeah. pieces of direct mail every month. Three emails a month to the whole list. That's right. With the, with the recipe that you shared that are probably also posted online and retargeted yeah. to the database. Then we have the four items of value a year or every quarter. Tell us about adding that to the 60 touch plan. Yeah, so this is a little bit of a bulkier piece of mail and it's gonna include an item of higher value. So examples, you know, they're all in our Google Drive, but you know, an example of that might be, we'll do a, an economic prospectus that comes out in February uh, and it'll just be a prospectus for the upcoming year as to what, what the housing outlook is. And that might be a six to eight page with some graphs and some slides, a cover letter. And that's gonna go into a larger you know, mail package that's gonna go to our database. Um, another example of an item of value might be our referral directory. So you know, sort of a miniature yellow pages that include our brand ambassador members, those other local businesses, and a list of other trusted members in 30 or 40 industries that a homeowner might want access to. And people love, absolutely love that. Um, when, we, when our agents go to their homes, they always have that there because they refer to it. Um, and then some other things, you know, the notepad that goes on, on the fridge that, that stays on there for, you know, a few months, the calendar towards the end of the year. Um, but a heavier piece, bulkier piece, higher value item four times. So that's going to be- Does this go into the whole 2,600 mailing list? It is, yep. Are you fulfilling those in-house or does a company stuff that stuff mail? Company does it for us. Got it. Yeah, company does it for us. And I don't know that the would... details as much because I'm pretty far removed at this point on cost or what companies use, but we have a company do it. Got it. And I'm assuming, obviously, for this, for the audience here, you're definitely using a company to mail the letters and the newsletters and print them. In a company. Oh, yeah. A mail yeah. house does that. You're not printing it off on your printer. Yeah. And we used to do it when we first started. We did it. My wife and I did it. I mean, we folded it and put it in the envelopes. And, How and it big was, all, was your list when you first started? Yeah, that? it was like 100, 150 people. And then as it grows, you, right, you realize that you can't do it like that anymore. And then you realize the cost is really high and it scares you when it gets really big. And even though the return is 1.5 million in GCI, so the cost actually is still a great return on investment, because you're afraid of, of going and having somebody else do it, you implement the brand ambassador program if you partner with great businesses who help zero cost the whole the whole entire thing. Who taught you that? Chris Waters. Yep. Yep. If you guys have a chance, we'll give we'll give him a shout out, shall we? The million yeah. dollar real estate team. Yeah, great book. Great book. Yeah, I say this a few times, but I was the ghostwriter on that. He was over at my house and we recorded the 12 hours of audio for it. Did you really? Yeah. That's so we awesome. flew out to San Diego. Yeah. And we both mic'd ourselves up and we just drove around to restaurants all day long talking. <laughs> and we had about 12 hours of audio. It was funny because just totally off topic. But at the end of the day, I fell asleep on the recording. And he's like, Frank, wake up. Are you asleep? <laughs> no, I'm not. And then when the transcript came back, it's like Frank sleeping. Frank, was... are you asleep? Frank snoring. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the book. You took it out. It was in the transcript though before they yes. asked. Yeah. So I'll put this in the chat. For what it's worth, clearly 
everyone's asking, what's the cost? How do I pay for the direct mail? There's expense here. Yeah. And you figured out that there's a whole bunch of businesses yeah. that um, make money when somebody moves. Yeah. Or want to be close to that transaction. That's right. That are not on the settlement statement. Yeah. Yeah. And you went out and figured out a way to get them to participate in all that resources it takes to be in front of that business. That's right, Frank. And I want to answer the question because I get this question a lot when we're doing a training on, on the 60 touch program. So in the Google drive, there's a 22 page playbook that is written for agents and teams, not like mine. It's written for agents that are joining my team or agents in one of our brokerages that shows them how to take the three steps, build, feed, and communicate with your database. And it takes them through exercises. And that is built on a, uh, for somebody who has no budget, so that's a 36 touch program, what I started with, that will take a newer agent or somebody that isn't ready to do all the direct mail and something a little bit more expensive or, or you know, what I'm doing, and it gets them started. So that playbook, that 22 pages is in the Google Drive. So you can start with touches that are, that are not costly, and there's a lot of different examples of those touches. What we're talking about today is, a, you know, much larger business that has a budget for those. And the thing for larger businesses, if they're asking, what about the cost? I'm going to go back to the, to, to what's the cost of not doing it. Right. So show, show me what you're spending on. If you're a big business on paid leads on various types of overhead, let's look at your P and L and, and just, you could write, if you're taking notes, Zillow, if we spend a dollar right now with co-marketing, we earn about three and a half to four dollars. Every dollar we spend, we, we receive about three and a half to four. On our 60 touch, every dollar we spend, and this doesn't include the reimbursement from the businesses, every dollar we spend, we earn 31. Whoa. So the database, that 1.5 million in GCI, right? The database returns at an exponentially higher level. Radio for us is a four to one return. Zillow is a four to one return. So all of our other lead sources give us a return, but the database dwarfs. Let me make sure you said that right. You get a one to 31 ROI on the database, whereas you're going to get a one to, one to three return on the paid leads. That's right. So the, and then so one to four return on traditional media? Well, radio. At least radio have, TV. Yeah, we have one radio station that gives us that return, depending on the season. But my, my point is, is that we're, we're worried about the cost, but we forget to look at our P&L and analyze the cost of, of all of these other things. So I would just say two things to that. If, if you're a smaller business, you're not ready to have the budget yet. There's a playbook that shows you how to do it with no budget and dif different touches. And if you're a larger business, just let's take a look at P&L and see what else we're spending money on. And if they're giving a 20, 25 to one, 30 to one return, keep doing that. But if they're not, you might want to think about switching from investing in that lead source to something like this. And the reason I'm convinced this converts at a much higher return on investment is again, we've already, it's, 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 it's not a lower cost. It's we've already put the six to eight hours in to get them to know, like, and trust us, which is a prospecting based activity. It's just, we put them, we put that in, in the interactions, passing them in the hallway at school or in our wedding or at work or in our social circles or at church. And we're not, we don't view that as an expense but it took minutes and eventually hours to do that. And, and so there's an expense there. But the reason this returns so much higher is we've already put that in and we're, we're just capitalizing on all that work. Well, pieces, direct mail. Yep. 36 emails, four items of value. That's right. Then a quick segment. How are we paying for all this? Yep. And we offset some of the cost. Yep. Brand ambassador program where someone else is the, you're the ambassador of someone's brand to your list. That's where that comes from. That's right. You can learn more about that. There's a chapter in the millionaire, the million dollar real estate team book yep. on Amazon. I dropped the link and for what it's worth for the audience, I'm going to give you guys a cool link of NARS state by state economic impact activity. You can go to your state in your case, I'll choose Pennsylvania, Dave. And it breaks down all of the money other businesses make when homes sell. 
That's so good, Frank. I never knew that was there. I love that. So you have Pennsylvania. You want to see California? <laughs> wow. So when you're when you're pitching your brand ambassador program, yep. this is a wonderful tool to use of how much economic impact there is there. And one That's other it. little tip, I'll just jump in. Yeah. It's, it's the NAR economic state-by-state -state impact study. Yeah, I'm just copying it from the chat. Somebody, in addition to that. that, if you Google pre-mover list, these are all the companies selling your data of buyers and sellers. And you can see how much it costs and who the purchasers of pre-mover lists are. These are all the companies you would target as a realtor to partner with because these are their customers are trying are buying your data. So these are the yeah. companies reselling your data where you can just basically then basically sell it direct. It's called a pre-mover list. Makes total sense. All right. So let's move on. 12 pieces of direct mail, 36 emails, four items of value mailed a year. A lot of direct mail, dude. All a lot right. of direct mail. Yep. Four client events. Talk to us That's about right. the four client events and the touches around the event. Yeah. And the client events are are where, you know, there's just it's such a high touch thing. And people are worried about how many people are coming to the events. And I'm worried about the event being a reason for us to touch our people. In, in just a richer way and um, multiple touches. So I'm gonna do four client events. Um, you know, the old, you've heard of the old pumpkin pie giveaway right around Thanksgiving. So that's a staple of ours. They come to you? They come to us, right to our office. Yep, yep. So in COVID, we created a, a drive-through and put it in their trunk, yep. So- How many pumpkins they, did you buy? Uh, we, well, we buy, for pump, we have a bakery make our pumpkin pies or pumpkin rolls they could choose and it's a few hundred i mean it's three 300 plus i may have got that wrong maybe it's a little more a little less but um you know it's a sizable amount of people that come come to the office for that event it's awesome and then um we do a client appreciation event as well um a lot of times we'll have just a local band come we'll have a barbecue set up and um we'll have some stuff for the kids to do two hours on a friday night Bring the family, hang out, free food, um, free drinks, a little bit of entertainment. Uh, we'll do a giveaway. We have a great giveaway that we often do around July 4th, Independence Day giveaway. Uh, and then a lot of years we'll do a, a care calls for our nonprofit. But if you don't have a nonprofit, um, there's multiple giveaways that we do. And the giveaways are great because they're low impact for the real estate for us as agents. And they get a lot of people calling in um so during one of our give it, giveaway time blocks we might get i think this last time we had close to 500 people call in to us from our database and have conversations with us um, and then we get to do a whole announcement on social media and give them something of value make sure you talk to an attorney in your state there's sweepstakes laws things like that you can't ask for anything of consideration in our state it has to be a true giveaway we don't want anything in return um, but those are some just some great events that we do. Now, the events to us are important. The attendance is important, but not nearly as important as the whole reason for the event being it creates a, an opportunity for us to touch in with our database. A lot of people that I talk to are afraid to call their database. They're not sure what to say. And for us to send a piece of direct mail to our database, inviting them to participate in something that's kind of cool and then call on the tail end of that direct mail piece and just say, hey, Frank, it's Dave over here on the team, have an event coming up, just wanna make sure you guys, sometimes that stuff gets lost, you guys got our invitation. And um, yeah, see if we can, first, how are you guys doing? And if we can mark you down for the event, and we'll have a conversation about them, how they're doing, and um, again, come from contribution. And so they're gonna get a direct mail piece, they're gonna get a phone call, we're going to leave a voicemail if, if we get their voicemail. And then we're also going to just do some email uh, promotion to the event, social media promotion, and then a follow-up after with some email, just uh, with a video, just tell them how it went in case they missed it so they can make it next year. Well, direct mail. Yep. 36 emails, four yep. items of value mailed out a year, four client events, 
If I add that up, I got 56. Are the extra four touches at four, four? The four calls. Four calls. There yeah. we go. Tell me about the yeah. four calls. Yeah, so the calls are, um, we're going to call our database around the events. So every time we have an event, Got it. it's an yep. opportunity to call the database. And it makes it easy to have a meaningful conversation about them, how they're doing, how's work, how's life. We have an event coming up. We'd love to see you there. Um, but more import importantly, make a, make a connection with them. We do have uh, a few dialogues that we use if we have had a quarter where we just couldn't get an event together, too busy. Um, we have uh, five or six dialogues that we use to call people. And they came from me. They're dialogues that I personally used calling my database for the last 20 years. And um, it's, it's in my playbook, but one's the apology dialogue. Um, we have an ask for business dialogue for people who are worried about asking for business. We have a great dialogue for that that doesn't sound off-putting. We have the invitation dialogue, home ownership dialogue, which is a really good one because um, you're not, you're, you're coming from contribution in that. So all of our dialogues, Come from value, come from contribution, and uh, we're not burning through that list and, and you know doing all this cold calling. These are people we want to nurture, uh, we want to give value to, and that's what our dialogues are based off of. That's great, man. So there's your sixty. That's it. Yeah, I, I love how when you're bringing somebody onto your team, you know everyone's kind of terrified of the phone call. Yeah. See, look, you're just calling four times a year to invite to an event, so the phone call is structured in the event invite, which is like. Your most greenest person starting out in direct sales. I can do it. Is very is very comfortable yeah. with that message. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk maybe at your level, what you're spending. Like talk about the how much it costs you to run with staff and people yeah. at your level. And then sure. just so we know where this the the cost of what we're talking about here for you. And then maybe break it down to where, okay, where someone should start with their list of 150. If yeah. there's no database program and we have a small database, but we got to get it going like you did. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the last, so total, total aggregate overhead for a business like ours. Um, you had said earlier on the call, and I'm happy to share this stuff. Um, we can send you this stuff if you're interested in our economic model. Um, you know, that's not in our Google Drive. Just reach out to me. I'm, I'm open book with all this stuff. But 3.1 million in top line gross commission income last year for this particular business. And uh, overhead is going to be around, uh, actually, I can pull the exact number for you. It's going to be around 900,000 in that business for total overhead. And we like to bucket our overhead. Um, so it's people, salaries, and staff. Uh, return on investment stuff, and then everything else. So the bucket of return on investment stuff, let's just hone in on that. If we're spending 900,000 to earn 3 million, of the 900,000, about 10% uh, of the total gross commission income goes to return on investment stuff. So let me just say that again. 3 million, let's call it 3.1 million, 10% of that is 300,000. So of the total 900,000 spent on overhead, 300,000 of that, which is a third of that, or 10% of the gross is spent on getting a re, uh, marketing, lead generation, all of the things in that category. Now, so I don't let have me the say numbers. this again, you're, you're getting roughly, for every dollar you put into marketing in the whole business, you yeah. get 10 out. That's that's right. Yeah. So you're getting a 10 time return on all of your marketing when you combine that's them. Right. But that's right. But the database is giving you one to 32. <laughs> the database other stuff's giving you one to three to four. So it's averaging out of 10. Yeah, the da database is much higher than the rest. Yeah. And I'm convinced that without the database as the core engine, you know, our radio, which is I mean, our listeners are in our community listening to the radio station. Um, our database amplifies that, right? Our, our database, our, our Zillow spend is in the zip codes where our database lives. So these people are seeing us in their mailbox, in their email, getting invited to client events. And then they're hearing about us again on the radio. They're, you know, seeing us when they open their social media feed, same content. 
And so we, we call the database uh, a lead source amplifier. And when we're doing coaching and consulting, we always talk to people about before you go into drop another lead pillar, let's get your database up and running systematically and consistency with 50 to 60 touches at a budget you can afford. And then let's start capitalizing and put down other lead pillars around that core engine. Um, and we find that it amplifies those things. If I go and do a radio campaign in a cold community or a billboard campaign, you, you know the price of mass media. It's, I mean, it, 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 it's hard, it's expensive. Um, it's a very different thing than going in a community that we've run a 60 touch program to 500, 1,000 people. And, and we're, we're doing some media on the roads that they're driving to work every day or a radio station where the audience is made up of some of the people in our database. So it helps to amplify all the other lead sources. Man, why is this so perfect? Why does your business make sense with working the database, 10 time X ROI, lasted for 20 years, other businesses complimentary offsetting the cost. By the way, is that 10% before or after the brand ambassadors? Um, the brand ambassador is a separate contribution from that. So that really, so your ROI is probably better than 10 times because you get yeah. zero cost that off. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Arguably. Probably yeah. a little, little bit better. And it depends on the year, Frank, right? Sometimes you, you push and you spend 12, 13%. Sometimes you're down at eight. So, you know, it looks a little like that, but it's about right. I'm trying to think of the next question I want to ask you. It's relevant. Obviously, all the examples of all this stuff is in your Google Drive. It's all in there. Yeah, we have a folder um, for, for everything, for all of the emails that we've done over the last 12 months. Every single one, every video, every text, every um, hot listings email, every newsletter the last year, every postcard with my handwritten note, um, every social media, a bunch of social, all of our social media posts. You'll see in there. Um, you'll see our client event summaries. You'll see our brand ambassador menu in there, all set up. Um, the commitment page for the business owner, pricing for them, what we do for them. See our nonprofit, seven steps to build a nonprofit in your business is included in there. Um, so yeah, that that's all all there. And then we'll we'll update that as as well. The items of value are in there as well that we spend quarterly. Let's talk about staffing. Yeah. Of, che of checks you're writing to pull this off. Like you had to build a marketing team, mm -hmm. a leadership team, an yeah. engine. Yeah. That doesn't require you to make this freight train run, the 60 touch mm -hmm. program run. Mm -hmm. Will you mm -hmm. tell me how you built your, like essentially your own internal agency to pull this off? Sure. How yeah, you organized I organized mean, it, what the roles are, everything. Yeah, I could tell you, tell you the story. You know, most of the people on our leadership team started out as as agents. Really, all all, all of them started out as agents in our in our businesses, and um, and as they you know grew and and as buyers agents or listing agents were able to learn what they wanted out of their life, and then start to talk about what what the additional opportunity is. So you know. Our first buyer's agent is now the CEO of our sales team and runs that so that I can focus on other things. And, um, you know, one of our agents is our operations director. Um, second buyer's agent runs our marketing. And um, he has some help, virtual assistant help. Uh, he has a graphic design background. And he decided to try real estate, but wanted to focus on marketing as well. And, um, you know, he picked up where I left off essentially, right? So I was running this program with my wife helping out, right? Sending the mail out. And um, he was able to come into an existing touch program and start to optimize it. And, um, you know, and now uh, it runs without whether I'm there or not. Um, and, uh, and, and it has for, for years. I love how they came up as agents. So they know the messaging that consumers yeah. want when you put them into yeah. marketing. 
Because yeah. a lot of times you bring someone outside the industry in the marketing and the messaging isn't right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we love we love hiring from within. I totally get it. Yep. Yep. Let's open up for some Q&A. Uh, either in the Q&A app on Zoom or in the chat. Feel free to ask a question. Uh, a little earlier, someone anonymous asked, what was that type called again? I'm not sure what that was referencing. Hmm. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, anything else you want to share, Dave? The promise was Dave's we're... going to share a 60 touch program. Yeah, I think we hit it, Frank. You asked great questions. And um, somebody oh, says, I got what, a question. What, what qualifies? Yeah. What qualifies somebody to be in a in a database? So, so let's define database and some of the different segments and the size of those segments and who gets what, because I'm sure you have it segmented someone. Yeah, we do. There you go. That's a good so, question. Thanks, Brian. It's a great question. So, and it, it outlines this in one of in the playbook I have, but I'm going to explain it as detailed as I can. So we have our outer circle and our outer circle is like, Brent, if you have any anybody that comes into your world in your CRM or you know, maybe as somebody that is a paid lead or on your website and they, and they just sort of come into the world, maybe there's a, a drip campaign or a smart plan or something touching in with them, but they haven't transacted with you. You haven't put the time in where they know, like, and trust you. Um, all of those people are going to be in our outer circle. And so that circle may be, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 in, in those lists. And they're still going to get all of our, uh, all of the marketing and touches that are free. So they don't cost us anything. So our three emails are going to go to, to them. Um, you know, so if we had a conversation with you, you came into our world, we maybe showed you a property and Hey, you know, can we stay in touch? Yeah, no problem. You're going to get uh, value from us. Um, just not attending a client event or a piece of direct mail. And to Brent's question, what qualifies somebody for that? That subset more niche list, we're going to spend more money on them. Exactly. And that's somebody who has transacted with us or myself or one of our team members in a list building exercise we have has identified them as one of the 250 or so people that they know, like, and trust. And there's a list building exercise that comes actually from KW. Um, where it asks you 150 or so questions, and it's in our playbook, but they're questions like, who, who was, you know, who's, who's your dentist? Who's your doctor? Who's cut your hair? Who's your mechanic? Who's this? Who do you invite to your wedding? Who's that? And so that helps you to build that list. So that 2,600 started with the people on my list that know, like, and trust me. Then I asked my, my wife, what about her? Who am I missing? Parents, if they're local, things like that. And then that core list, anybody who transacts with us and stays local by local, it's within about a two to three hour radius of where we are, are added to that list. And then anytime agents come in to our world and they, they, they start their list and, and those people know, like, and trust them, they're added to the list. And so in, in our team that's doing 350 transactions a year, three, you know, 300 or 280 or 200, maybe it's more like 250 are going to be added to that list each year just by the people we're transacting with. The yeah, last thing that's, back. yeah. Uh, Ham, for the last thing, it's like pulling teeth to do the list exercise. Yeah, it is. Hold on. Let's not just gloss over. Okay. All right. You sit down with your agents and your team yep. members yep. and go through all these names of who knows, likes, and trusts you to write down yep. their information, let alone find yep. their mailing addresses. Yeah. The yeah. energy that takes. Yeah. Am I allowed to do a screen share? Can I do that? Yeah. Let's turn on. Uh, when you do it, just so it doesn't mess up the recording, make sure you keep it 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Are you like, gonna have to, you, like, I know. It's okay. You've got to, you've got to tell I know. me. I, I'm, I'm cursed. All right. Let, let, me see if it, let me see if I can get a screen I share. I think I can. Hang on. Disable. Is, is, is it letting you sh screen share? It isn't, hang but that's on. all right. I'm here. Here's hey, co-host, hang on. You're now co-host. Try. Okay, good. There you go. So I'm just gonna pull something up for for you guys.
Here's a database playbook, okay? Look at this, Frank. Here's the action items to build your list. What's that say? 12 hours. You see that? <laughs> yeah. 12 hours. Okay. It says 12 like a, hours. Okay. Like how I called that out. Yeah, 12 hours. It's 12 hours. And then, and then it goes. But here's, here's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Six to eight hours with 400 people is 2,400 hours. That's a full year's worth of work. And, and my thing is, is we're not, we're not, we're going to have to prospect to that many people and put all that time in, or we could take 12. So what we do is, you know, it's three hours a week, three hours a week, Frank, Friday, nine to noon, Friday, nine to noon, Friday, nine to noon. And we're going to list build in the first month that you start real estate. Cause it's the highest dollar per hour activity that you can do. So everybody balks at it. Oh, how am I going to build this list? And they want to go out and on the rollerblades and go door to door for two years. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. Let's just take three hours a week for the next four weeks and build the list. And then you don't have to think about it again. And it's going to be a super high return. But it's a great Thanks. question because it's the biggest objection. Dave, that's the quote I'm going to give for this interview. List building is the highest and best use of your time. It really is. That's the quote. Really is. I'm going to sum it yeah. up as that. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that this. Um, uh, for, yeah, oh. for Brent, I hope that answered Brent's question. Just one last yeah. thing. Um, there are ways to do giveaways and things like that where you can start to have a meaningful conversation and it's not going to be a full no like and trust as some of those more intimate relationships are. But there are ways to create value, have meaningful conversations, ask permission to send items, keep, keep them up to date on market information and add them to your list as well. So we do employ a few of those programs a year to build our list. We got three minutes left. Three minutes. Go ahead and show your screen. Why don't you show people what they get in the Google Drive, give them a preview if they buy it. Yeah, I'd love to. And I'll put the link in the chat where you can get it. I'd love to. Is this too big or too small? Is the, is the window okay? Make the window, make the window smaller. Make the window make, smaller. Make your, yeah, because it makes it larger for us. So if you make the... Yeah, make it, yeah. Smaller, good. Yeah. Okay. Squish, yeah, that's good, that works. All right, so let's just look real quick, a uh, couple things that we wanna put in here for, for people. So we have some emails in here. Um, let's just look at some video emails. So here's a bunch of video emails. People wonder what to do with video content. We're gonna continue to add to, to this list as time goes on, um, but when you click on it, you know, you're going to see uh, that it will open the link and it will actually take you to, to a video. So you can actually see exactly what we're doing in each of these videos. Um, we have our hot listings email blast in here. Again, you're going to be able to open it and you're going to be able to see, you know, exactly what the email looks like, our brand ambassadors in there, how everything's laid out, the calls to action, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be able to a couple other things, a couple of highlights. You see all our uh, events when you open these up. See all, all four of our events. Um, this is kind of cool one. Here's um, you know, the, the, the four categories of our social media posts, which our analytics on our social media are really through the roof, thanks to our marketing team. Um, but you'll see you know, personal examples from our business page. And uh, you know, we, we have had companies design this, the listings lab um, that we've paid, I think, a, a lot of money to design our posts for us. And, and that's all in here. Um, listing posts, client celebration posts, community posts. You'll see all the community stuff that, that we do, different examples of that for you guys. And then as you go down through, you'll see the items of value, all of the exact examples, the referral directory, item of value, you know, all of the different categories of, uh, you know, people that we include in there, what our different notepads and calendars and things like that look like. Um, miscellaneous items. So the brand ambassador brochure is in here. Um, that took us a long time to develop. Uh, the 22 page playbook, right? If you don't have a budget, all of that's in here with action items as to how you can just take you right through the list building exercise, everything, how you can run database uh, at no cost. We have the compassion program, seven steps video there. If you wanna build a nonprofit into your business, 
Uh, we have all of our newsletters housed right in, in here. And when you open that, you can see exactly how they're laid out, the calls to actions that we do. And then of course our postcards as well. And you know, as we grow our business, Frank, um, we'll add to this, modify it as it evolves. That stuff will show up in here as well. And I got some good news, Dave. What's Dave's that? marketingfolder.com works. It works. Test it. See it. We can I'll see we it. Can let's see if it, it loads. Yeah. We can. Yeah. Let's see if it works. Dave's marketing folder. I like that. Isn't it good? I I I love that. Let's let's Dave's marketing uh, You get your own URL. Dave's marketing folder.com. And then while you're checking that out, um, oh, it's right there, Frank. There you That's go. amazing. There you go. So viral is available too. So you can go to getviral.com. We execute a piece of the larger program Dave's showing you. There's a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you one of the questions was, is how fast could I expect results? I'd say 90 days, at least, you know, getting some engagement, people watching your videos, getting some leads when you start rounding up your list, at least emails, sending out some the three emails a month. I would start with the digital marketing to your existing list. And then I would start adding on the direct mail as the costs go up, right? But if you're interested, you can go to getviral.com or request a free strategy call and we can execute the digital parts of what Dave's doing and a little bit of the direct mail parts. We actually do a part of our program, Dave, not everyone does it. It's a very small number of clients where we actually take their videos with a call to action and a little market update and put it on a piece of paper, a letter. There you go. And we, yeah. we mail it out once a month, but it's it's like less than 10% of our clients at that because they don't have the mailing list. Yeah, right. They don't have the addresses. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Dave, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, why don't you drop your email if anyone has any questions in the chat? Yeah, for sure. My email is frank at getviral.com if you have any questions. Dave's marketing folder will be available for the next seven days. Hope you guys got some good value out of the hour together. Dave, congratulations on building a a beautiful business. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. Couldn't have done it without amazing people on our team and without your help all these years and so many other mentors. So appreciate Good you job, guys. Yeah. Let you guys go. Thanks everybody. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. -bye.